And uh, when I switch this on, I have that many amps coming through. This is these are the amps going into the batteries from the charge controller. Well, it's moving the voltage up a little. Do that. You can see the sun is out, which is rare when I'm at home. When I'm home on the weekends and the sun's out, seems like whenever I'm at work the sun's out. So I got these up and running here. Those ones and those ones, and these are these are going to those other charge controllers. Same thing with the ones on the roof. The ones up there, they're actually going to the uh, the little uh, <coughs> seven amp. Harbor Freight charge controllers, which are these ones here. So that's, you know, that way they're not, you know, there's no um, power coming through, blocking the, there's blocking diodes built into those. Anyhow, signing off. PGM98387 here. And Let's just talk a little bit about um, what I'm trying to do in my suburban tract home and what I've learned through a um, winter power outage season with the solar electric system. Because it's awkward for me, I have to run a power cord through the window into the house. I'm, I'm, I'm using dealing with extension cords laying around on the floor. This is a problem. The other problem is I'm in my house and I'm using the, the solar electric system and I'm not very aware of the voltage level in the battery bank being inside of the house because of the remote location from in the house to the solar electric setup where I can read the voltmeter. Now as far as the uh, ice and the snow, the panels did hold up well even though they did get ice coated. That was maybe about maybe a quarter of an inch of ice to an eighth of an inch of ice on the panels following the snowstorm. Yeah, gentleman asked me about the batteries and why I don't use larger batteries. Why I, I want to chain all these smaller batteries together. And when I started out I wanted to try to stay with the same si style and size. Those were the cheapest that I could find. They seemed to be the lowest price in the in the power range, you know, and it was you know, they were commonly used, so it might be better to get a bigger battery because it seems as though as though the bigger the battery, the more um, robust the the system is for power drainage. And the bussing, the bussing all of the wires together, combining everything together. Now, traditionally, solar off-grid systems commonly were 12 volt. In the early days of solar, it was more common for 12 volt systems. Being that 12 volts more common because of the automobile, you know, you have 12 volt in your car, so it's or an RV. Well, it's changed a lot today. We have a lot of the, uh, the higher voltage systems. You know, we got, you know, multi-point power tracking that can reduce voltage from higher voltage panels, which allows for smaller wire diameters in the um, length of wire from the solar panels to the charge controller or the, or the combiner box. And I like to think of it as like um, a tree and branches on a tree. You have you have you have twigs and then you have stems and then you have branches and then you have limbs and then you have a trunk. 
and in the same way the power is being collected off of the cells the wires are thin and small and as they as the power is combined further and further away from the panels towards the the storage meet batteries and you want to have thicker wire <coughs> thicker wire for higher amps so you build your system is in a tree you know you have your leaves or the panels and the what I was just saying <coughs> another problem is it's mine I'm finding I'm not using the power enough when it's available when the sun is out and it's shining on the panels I'm not having the system connected having my inverter on and actually using that power as it's coming in and shining on the panels which is a limited window during the day you know it's between 9 a.m. and you know 1 to 2 p.m. in the afternoon depending upon the time of year late you know in the middle of summer it can be <clears throat> you know 8 in the, 8 in the morning till <clears throat> 3 in the afternoon and consider a ground mount system that's that's I think it's a way to go especially if your weather is you know unpredictable in your area you know I would even say if you live in an area where there's even high winds like uh, hurricanes or s tornadoes or maybe you live close to the coastline where the winds can get real high <clears throat> it's a good idea to have it on mount it on your roof with a lot of mounting you know make sure those panels are really secure and they're not going to blow off also think about venting the panels because they do get hot when they're in the sun and the hotter the temperature of the panels are most brands mono and poly will lessen their voltage the voltage will drop when the when the panels get hot to the touch so it's wise to have the panels raised above if you're putting them on